Well, hey fans, welcome back to another South by Southwest review. And today we're going to talk about Roadhouse 2024. So Roadhouse 2024 is an action film directed by Doug Lehman, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Jessica Williams, Diana Melchior, Conor McGregor, Billy Magnuson, and, and many other names. And it basically follows this former UFC fighter named Elwood Dalton. And he's, you know, down in his luck. He's semi-suicidal, I would say. And, you know, he gets this job working as a bouncer at this uh, roadhouse in Florida. And in defending this place, he becomes sort of a local legend and gets into a bigger plot than he signed up for. I remember seeing the original Roadhouse as a kid in the 90s and I decided not to revisit it before watching this movie because I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really remember a lot from that movie other than Patrick Swayze and some of the fights, but I said, I'm just going to this and try to enjoy this film and not really try to compare it to the original. And I, I, had, a, I had a fun time. I had a fun time. This isn't like the best movie you're going to watch, but it is really carried by Jake Gyllenhaal. This guy is a star. He, in all the roles he's done, and they're all very different, I think he is just a phenomenal actor in the shape that he got in for this movie. This dude is ripped upon ripped upon ripped. And the character he plays, Elwood, he has a, a tragic backstory in that he, he, he basically has anger issues. And in one of his UFC fights, he accidentally killed his opponent because of his anger issues and really not letting the fight just end. So when he gets into fights in this movie, he, he you can tell, you know, he's a nice guy. He doesn't want to fight. He does not want to do any of this stuff. But when he gets serious, just like the emotion is removed from his face. He just kind of like eats punches and just looks like this, just like, you, you can't kill me. I'm already dead type of face. And wow, Gyllenhaal just does a great job with that. Uh, Jessica Williams is great as Frankie. She's the owner of the roadhouse. She's the one who hires Dalton to come and work for her. Diana Melchior, she portrays the love interest. Her role isn't really that major, I would say. Uh, it, it does feel like she's kind of squeezing there. I don't think that she necessarily helps move the plot along that much, but it was nice seeing her on screen. I do like the chemistry that she had uh, with Gyllenhaal. The most outrageous person in this movie is Conor McGregor. Now, the scene in which he appears in the movie, I actually quite enjoyed because he's he doesn't really say much at first and he's just doing his, you know, his Conor McGregor walk and he's just like smiling the whole time, just looking really big and cocky. And as he appears further in the movie and he keeps talking and he's Irish and you can tell he's not an actor. And his lines sound awful coming out of his mouth. I think, for some reason, like, if his character were a mute, he would have been a better villain in the story. But just the more he talked, the more annoying his character got for me. I would have rather him just have been a brute who could fight, and that's all we really needed from him. But, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's basically... I mean, like, even when you see Conor McGregor in a fight, he seems a little... He was having a little too much fun. I'll say that. He was having a little too much fun in this role, but that's fine. And But, but fun is part of the game. He was probably told to have fun. Jake Gyllenhaal's having fun. The little one-liners that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal gives this character yeah, are great, are great. I, I want to talk about the visual effects in this film. For the most part, they are pretty good, but you can tell, like, they're, they're using CGI to do some of the fights. And there are scenes where it looks great, like the camera will switch like a first person point of view, and I really dug that. But other times it looks like people are punching CGI people, and it's like, it just doesn't look, it's uncanny when they're fighting. And you can definitely tell in that scene where Post Malone is fighting in the beginning of the movie, which there's that. But I don't think it really detracts from, you know, what you're seeing on screen. You're still going to have a good time. And I kind of do wish that the film stayed small. It was just about, you know, this guy who accepts a job as a bouncer at Roadhouse and he's just protecting this place. Towards the latter half of the film, it, it becomes like a really big action movie. Kind of it's like they wanted to squeeze that whole drug thing in there. And Billy Magnuson's character is like the worst villain ever. He's super annoying. I didn't know. I don't know if I really needed all that aspect. I, I would have liked a smaller film about this guy coming to terms, you know, with himself 
while protecting this bar. That that's all they really needed. In terms of a score, I'm gonna give Roadhouse 2024 a solid 6.8 out of 10. I, like I said, I had fun and I definitely agree, Doug Lyman. They should have released this in theaters during the summer and I think they could have made a pretty penny off of it. I'm not sure what the budget is, but yeah, the budget couldn't have been too big for a movie like this. Uh, that's why I thank you guys for joining me for another movie review. You can watch the review on YouTube and the website, flipfrogllc.com slash flicksfrog. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And please, pretty please, Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.